where we're going. We won't need eyes to see, dear we're, event horizon abandon all hope, you who enter, the inferno all the crazy shit goes down here. The war, also called the Empyrean, the Immaterium, hell, the realm of souls or sometimes simply chaos, or in Warhammer fantasy the realm of chaos or the winds of magic is an infinite dimension of pure magic psychic argent power. The warp in fantasy is the source of most magic in the setting and in Warhammer 40,000 is her HP. Lovecraft inspired grimdark answer to the hyperspace trend that's universally present in almost all space opera for faster than light travel and communication, while simultaneously also being the afterlife in both. The resident of eldritch abominations such as the chaos gods, the warp is sort of an eldritch parallel dimension where the laws of physics no longer apply and is primarily composed of raw energy, shaped by the emotions, best dreams, worst nightmares and most disgusting rape fantasies of those living in the real world. Think of the warp as a mixture between the far realm, b, the criminal infested dark web, and a public toilet clogged full of shit used sex toys and trash coupled with all the drugs you can think of. It works a bit like that. Except that it's worse, because thanks to the ruinous powers, it'll often actively try to kill you, basically like the internet, just with more anal rape, dying horribly and less sitting around. Or hell, if wicked and righteous people could end up there and you don't even have to die first. Fantasy. The warp was a realm that existed before life on the planet with the immortal chaos gods already formed within it, as well as most of the beings who would enter the warp at later points in the timeline like Enkari, Balaka, and Karnak thanks to the time fuckery of the warp. The old ones connected the warp gates to it early on in their involvement in the Warhammer world. They channeled pure magic through it in order to create the races they wanted to fight chaos. But as they continued to be displeased with their creations they pulled more and more energy from the warp. This caused the warp gates to destabilize and explode into massive portals into the warp. Flooding the world with magic and causing massive invasions of demons to surge forth into the material plane. To combat the demon threat, the Asur established waystones all over the world to suck the excess magic back into the warp. As a result, the power of the warp waxes and wanes. When the warp swells with energy, the chaos gods within battle for control and the material plane is safe, uh, from their influence. As the warp empties, the world is invaded by hordes of demons from all corners. What happens in the mortal plane strengthens the chaos gods. When greenskins march in a wag, corn Gorkamorka grows in strength and towers over his neighbors. The more magic is cast. The more influenced Siege can exert over his pawns both within and without the realm of chaos. As death, famine, rot and despair become more prevalent after wars destroys the land, Nurgle becomes the dominant power in the war. When times of peace come and art, pride, and hedonism come to the people Slanesh finds himself spreading rubbing his hair their taint across both realms. Originally. All gods existed to a degree within the war. Cain led many of the elf gods against the chaos gods, scarring Slanesh permanently and cutting the forces of chaos for many years to come. Despite this, the elf gods were forced into the material plane in a weakened state while Cain was forced into a mortal form. The gods of the humans were also forced from it at some point in time eventually residing within their temples in the empire. Dwarf gods, possibly due to the nature of dwarfs themselves to disrupt the power of the war, were notably absent from mention in the war. In addition to the four, there was also chaos gods of order and melee within the war. While they have not been mentioned in recent fluff, they were not redconned as existing either. The Hornet Rat is also a warp entity, being a greater demon of Nurgle which created a race of rat mutants in his bid for godhood. He currently resides within Nurgle's realm, hiding from his former master. In the end times event, Nagash consumes two gods of death and binds himself to a full eight of magic, meaning all of the war becoming a chaos entity if not outright chaos god. The gods of the humans diminish greatly in strength as their temples in Aldorf are attacked and desecrated. While the strength of Sigma is split between both in his reincarnation Voltan and the current Emperor of the Empire, Karl Franz creating a true living god emperor being in fantasy. 40k. In the universe of Warhammer 40,000, 
The warp is a grimdark answer to the hyperspace trend that's universally present in almost all space opera for faster than light travel and communication. Unlike in fantasy, the warp in 40k is actually an adaptation of two metaphysical frameworks. Plato's world of ideas, and Cole Jung's collective unconscious. Both describe a conceptual metaphysical dimension consisting of the common ideas and thoughts present in all existence. In Platonic philosophy, all the ideas we think are actually manifestations of a higher extra-dimensional idea. To Jung, our collective unconscious is populated by such absolute and unending ideas, known as archetypes, Gods in classical mythology are an example of this. Every little thought or emotion affects this collective unconscious to some degree. Most people can't do much to the warp on their own. But lots of people thinking similar thoughts or feeling similar things will have a pronounced effect, especially if said people are psychic. Allah the world of mage. The ascension. Even worse is that as part of our unconscious is born out of our worst collective nightmares, we can never rid ourselves of these demons. Gods who specialize in specific forms of thought and feeling are born from this place when psychic energy accumulates with a critical mass. An example is the emperor created by countless shamans committing suicide at the same time. This is the reason why the chaos gods are well chaotic to the extreme because the material universe and everybody inhabiting it are themselves chaotic to the extreme and in need of serious psychiatric therapy and or purging. According to old parts of law the material universe is affected by the big four chaos gods fighting each other for supremacy. If corn has taken the lead a lot more fighting and war, Nurgle more plagues and decay, Slanesh a lot more torture and rape, Tsinch a lot more Machiavellian scheming and just as planned. The validity of this is debatable as it comes from chaos worshippers themselves, and we know how legit these guys are when it comes to information about the war. If you're not a chaos god, a chaos space marine or a demon, you have no business staying here without sanity checks, unless you're called a Drago, Oxyotlan or Lemon Russ, according to if the emperor had a text-to-speech device, Doomguy started out making sanity checks, when he failed them a Cetan made him a god. In which case you can freely stroll around, burning down Nurgle's garden, killing Slanesh's personal handmaidens and breaking cannon with every step. The Imperium of Man has shitty protection against it, and effectively plays a game of Russian roulette in hopes that they wouldn't get themselves dismembered alive in 11 dimensions speeding towards wherever the Emperor tells them to. Which of course means that all the races of the galaxy flock to the warp like Dumbus Boy Scouts to a not tying badge except for the TAU, who are only just discovering these horrors awaiting their tasty navy eat, with their primitive warp drives only skimming the stable surface of the warp. The Necrons, which hate it, and thus use a Star Trek-like FTL that functions in real space and therefore does not need a warp. Fucking cheaters. And the Tyranids who use wonky gravity manipulation to get around when they need FTL travel. The Elder and Dark Elder are also somewhat cheating as they use the webway which is like a complex network of highways through the warp once engineered by the now extinct old ones when the warp was a lot more stable back then. A lot safer but a hell of a lot easier to get lost in. If the warp is the deep web, then the webway is like Tor, which provide an anonymous safety from being 1337H4X0 read by the FB, sentient viruses or horrendous cyber criminals. Only that in this tour you'll have to encrypt all the confusing maths and find the global servers yourself. However this doesn't mean there are no benevolent entities in war. The problem is that either that specific benevolent entity is the Emperor, who's now catatonic in a position where he has no mouth and must scream, while his soul is being used as a psychic navigation lighthouse in the warp called the Astronomicon. Or they interfere with the Materium once in a billion years. And when they do, they actually do nothing of significance. Also, benevolent entities would get consumed by evil entities, and or are quickly exaggerated or warped into something evil due to the massive amount of suffering in the material world. Or since 99% of the stuff in the warp wants to kill you and eat your soul, they also tend to just get ignored. History, supposedly. According to many theorists the most crusty and privileged imperial historians with access to the oldest records available, 
One of the earliest and possibly the first encounter of humanity with the horrors of the warp occurred sometime during the third millennium with the American starship Event Horizon. While the ship's gravity drive did successfully open a gateway in space-time, it leapt outside the known universe and into another dimension, described later on by DR. Where is a dimension of pure chaos, pure evil? The Event Horizon has since then gained an evil sentience, telekinetic abilities and some grim dark gothic aesthetics, tormenting and mind raping its occupants with the aim of compelling them to return to hell. The event horizon gradually faded in the records of spaceship accidents with the development of the Geller field, until humanity would rediscover the true danger of the warp 24 millennia later. Stronger and more fucking horrifying than ever. There is another report of a warp invasion on Mars and Terra back in the 15th millennia that was fought off by a lone human. Though it was thought it is confirmed that he is a similar entity to the Emperor which throws his humanity into question out the window. He fought wave after wave of demons on Mars until he and his allies were killed in an ambush by the demons. And the Satan. However. Did his physical death stop the marine fuck no this marine's collective rage? and the energy siphoned from the demons he killed, was strong enough to give him a physical presence in the warp and he fought, ripping and tearing his way out of hell until eventually killing the bloodthirsty leading the invasion. When he returned to reality, he discovered that the incursion spread to earth as well, and so he ripped and tore his way through the demon armies until he came face to face to the manifestation of evil. It is said that the marine came face to face with corn or at least a manifestation of him. After beating the shit out of Megasodon, he pranced through the Emeterium, ripping and tearing every single demon he could come across, until a bunch of bloodletters got the jump on him and locked him in a box. But then he broke out. Then the Setan tried to invade Earth again. He said fuck that and did the same thing all over again. But this time he killed the head Setan too. And had their dimension assimilated into the war. TL. DR he came. He saw. He ripped and tore demon guts. And angel brains. He is currently being contained in a stasis pod somewhere in the Immaterium. That is said to be guarded by Korn himself. And unlike Lionel Jensen he really doesn't want to be woken up. During the time of the dinosaurs and before, the old ones were cranking out powerful sickers like there was no tomorrow, shitting out creatures like orcs, elder, slan, and who knows what else to find the endless tide of mummy robots and star eating, life energy nomming Lovecraftian energy gods that look more like squid people in their native realm, and they still lost. They might have had a traitor among them. All the Rarara Eeg felt during the fighting by all those powerfully psychic races as they fought and died changed the warp in the Milky Way from a calm place where you could get anywhere you wanted without much trouble transformed into the hell hole it is now, minus the demons. Instead, there were squid jellyfish parasites called enslavers who would mind control sickers and eventually turn them into a warp portal which would both kill the sicker and allow more enslavers to come out. They still show up every now and then to make life miserable for everyone else in the galaxy. The elder hid like a bunch of pussies in the webway system while the few remaining old ones who weren't killed by the necrons and the setan were wiped out by the enslavers. The slan did something and the orcs survived and made their own gods. After a while humanity evolved and were once led by powerful sickers known as the shamans. They used to reincarnate, but the gestation of who would soon be the ruinous powers of chaos rendered them unable to do that and instead their souls were consumed by the war. These shamans were forced to commit mass suicide at the same time so that all their souls would merge into a single entity able to protect mankind from the ruinous powers the emperor. He guided mankind under various guises until the dark age of technology when humans invented the navigators and the Geller field to go through the warp and colonize the galaxy. Unfortunately the elder fell into massive debauchery and being an entire race of sickers caused the birth of Slanesh and the age of strife where the warp was turned into the demon and tentacle rape infested shit pit it is now. The emperor created the astronomicon as a guiding beacon for navigators but that was just a metaphorical band aid for his real solution to conquer the webway using a psychic amplifier called the golden throne and exterminate those damned space elves once and for all. They didn't deserve it for birthing Slanesh. Unfortunately, during the Horus heresy, 
Magnus the Red just had to make that psychic phone call that damages the throne forcing Malkada the Sigilite to clog the throne with his psychic powers while the Emperor and Horus brutalized each other. Malkada crumbled to dusk just as the Emperor's massive golden ass was placed on the throne and now in the 41st millennium he is in a perpetual state of eternal torture trying to clog the demon infested webway with his ass so that terror would not turn into a second eye of terror. While humanity now has to sacrifice thousands of sickers just to keep the throne running. And for all his troubles, Magnus was made a demon prince and the eternal pawn of Tsinch. Grimdark. And then Abaddon finally did it, ripping open the Eye of Terror into the Great Rift dividing the galaxy in half. So I hear you guys are into thick big titty wafers. Well we got you covered at nickbedlier.co.uk. One stop shop for Kumja models. However we do sell a lot more than just smart models we got everything for running any fantasy settings and even some not grim dark science fiction models. In fact we even have some anime inspired models and video game. But if models is not your thing we also have some role playing adventures and dnd 5e meme subclasses. Also every video we will be giving away all our homebrew content to a subscriber of the channel. All you got to do to be in with a chance is subscribe. Today's winner is this guy. Well done. Claim your prize by contacting us via email at nickbedearcontact at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the video. Related phenomena. Just as with Earth's oceans, the warp occasionally has storms here and there that block all shipping within the neighborhood. Warp storms were largely responsible for the collapse of 40k's pre-imperial human civilizations when every planet was suddenly isolated and left to the mercy of demon-possessed sickers. In fantasy, Warp Storm caused a massive swell in the strength of any magic used, allowing great and terrible feats as the world itself warps and mutates. The warp also plays havoc with space and time. Journey times through the warp are variable and not possible to predict with great accuracy. A given journey could take days or weeks depending on your luck. If you're really unlucky, a journey that usually takes days may take centuries, while well, you only experienced a few hours of travel time, so the war you came to fight is long over and everyone you know is dead. You might even wind up at your destination several weeks before you set off, and enjoy the priceless looks of horror on the faces of the inhabitants of the planet below that they're about to be hit by an orc while you can also end up popping out few hundred years in the past and get yourself executed by the inquisition for trying to impose someone who does not exist yet. Time is so flexible in the warp that at one point an orc wag arrived before it left and the warbus killed himself to get two of his favorite gun or guns. This is certainly a great way for shitty writers to resolve plot holes and inconsistencies. Timmy Wimmy, Warply Dopply, Stuff. Ordo Kronos used to do something with these time travelers, but disappeared for some reason. Is the warp the same thing in AOS Fantasy slash 40k? For now. Yes, it is indeed the same warp of fantasy and Age of Sigma because GW decided that having two, or three, Versions of the same extra dimensional hell party on LSD was too tiresome to keep up with. This is of course a huge source of scub and so it's best approached in a careful manner whenever the topic comes up. Anti-warp measures. By this point you may be wondering why is that no one has developed extensive measures to counter warp based phenomena. The answer is that, yes, it has been some serious attempts with variable measures of success. In 40k, the biggest project to shut down the warp for good was done by the Cetan and the Necrons before they jumped on the former and turned them into Pokemon. During the war in heaven, they built a vast network of pylons made from the substance known as Noctilith to effectively negate the old one's main advantage the being the use of their webway. Interestingly this may actually explain the boundaries of the current Eye of Terror, as it appears to be that the Necrons built the network with the specific idea to surround the Elders' core territories as they were slowly becoming more advanced while the old ones were getting wind across the galaxy. Unfortunately for the Necrons, the Elder developed quicker than expected, 
and with their own rebellion against the Setan crippling them, made them abandon the network project midway. How this would have affected the Necrons themselves now that they depend on the webway through the Dolmen gates is a great source of speculation. A derived example of this sort of technology is the Null Field Matrix which allows a tomb world to deny the effects of the warp in their immediate territory, effectively crippling everything warp related. Unfortunately it appears these sort of devices are quite fragile and indeed would be a major target in any battle against the Necrons by anything warp based. The Necrons apparently tried a different approach to developing the pariah warp gene. This point however has conflicting sources. As it appears sometimes the gene occurs naturally without their direct intervention, maybe it's effectively a natural occurrence, and the Scalabots just decided to make it more common through genetic manipulation. In the case of the Imperium they have the Galafield technology as their most widespread way to deal with the warp. Supposedly what the Galafield generator does is creates a bubble of reality around the ship so it can travel across the warp instead of the neutralize it. This bubble seems to still allow for minor warp events to happen such as the sending and receiving of astropathic messages. The second interwarp technology used by the Imperium are wards and rituals to contain chaos pollution. This seems to be still warp based as rather than completely nullify the energies of the immaterium it redirects its flow and shapes it so it can deny the most negative effects of the warp. This also seems to be the basic of the chaos denying quality of faith in 40k as it naturally shields the individual through the redirection of chaos based warp energy through more orderly currents although this may be an overly simplification and there may be more factors. As all things related to faith it's nigh impossible to measure. The third mechanism for the Imperium to block warp phenomena is the use of blanks. Be it in the form of agents trained by the Inquisition or the Assassin Temples. Although sometimes blanks who weren't caught by the black ships pop up here and there as literary devices. Another, bleak away is by using the remains of the blanks in the form of missiles with warhead cores made of their ashes. It's not specified if the blanks are actively killed. Or the Imperium just waits for them to die, although in this particular case the latter would make more sense as a blank is too much of a valuable resource to be used up in a single attack unless the need is too extreme, but then again, this is 40k so you may expect both cases to happen. The fourth measure to deal with the warp is being really racist and paranoid and killing would be sickers immediately. This is actually somewhat effective. Wild sickers are the most frequently way for warp shit to gain access to reality so if you're diligent about dealing with sickers and keep their population low you keep a lot of warp shenanigans from happening the first place. And with the current advance of the plotline. Belisarius call seems to be working in retro engineering the Necron Noctilith base technologies to find a way to close the Cicatrix Maledictum. And the Necrons aren't quite too happy about the kleptomaniacs and the priesthood of Mars stealing their property and war has erupted in many systems. The Orcs, being Orcs, have a straightforward and simple solution to this problem just as they do any other. They nail great big teeth onto their ships as an offering to Gork and Mork for safe passage. If that doesn't work, they can always fight the demons instead, which makes for great entertainment while you're floating through the warp on a derelict hulk. Interestingly it may be that Orkiness works in a similar way to human faith when it comes to shielding adverse effects from the warp. you are a bit of a mixed bag as for the most part they don't even believe there is any danger to the warp at all, which is terrible naive of them. But they got dealt a good hand in that their souls are particularly dim in the warp which means they tend not to get noticed by the nasty things out there anyway. In fantasy and age of sigma. In the current AOS setting it's the Caradron overlords the ones who have been looking for a way to neutralize magic related phenomena. With the development of the magic dampening null projectors and void stone scatter mines. These technologies seem to be costly and not widespread but it appears to have effects both upon the winds of magic and chaos born powers although this hasn't been explored more than beyond some minor references. Supposedly Aziz magic has a strong anti-chaos death effect, it's not clear if this is natural or the fact it's incarnate is sigma, but it may be say that this source is still warp based. The other winds of magic may have a similar potentiality but Azir appears to be the best way to go when it comes to fighting chaos. Probably this was done in order to link the best at chaos smashing attribute to Sigma's own power, 
as in fantasy it was Hish the wind of light that was the most effective at purging demons. Faith seems to have a rather similar effect than 40k, with the best example being the hallowed knights who have such a strong faith it shields them from adverse chaos effects such as Nurgle's plagues. Nagash has, perhaps unintentionally, stumbled on something similar with the magic resistant Oshiok Bono Reapers of the Null Myriad. After being harshly opposed by the forces of order, Nagash had them hide on the edges of Shaish, where they fought off many demonic armies. Hitchhiker's Guide to the War If you are not Chaos, Chaos Affiliated, Chaos Favored, a Blank, or a Subject of the Divinity Machine, you are already dead as the Yawning Abyss would have ripped your body apart and torn your soul asunder the moment you got close. Caveat, if you lousy an all gave fun crumb and all da stuff with speakers on it in Warhammer Fantasy, the warp only holds non-demon attack hazards for beings who are tempted by chaos, so mostly just weak-minded humans. In fact, there is a character lost within the warp who the chaos gods have forbidden from being harmed, as a parody of Dante's Inferno. Being favored by chaos is difficult, but is possible with the right connections. If you have earned favor with one of those connections you will be given a pass. This pass comes in many forms some of which are painful. It is also not all access. If you stop at a reflecting pool, the warp equivalent of a truck stop, a certain chaos god may or may not be waiting to rape you in more ways than one. If you find elders stranded here, please sacrifice them to eternal torture under slanish for fucking everything up. Do remember not to attempt this while near cornered as they will rip your entrails out and garrot you. Or worse, if you just kill the elder the cornet will leave you alone. Maybe. Feel free to ride a screamer of tsinch like your own magical demon pony through the stars. Disclaimer. This action would require you to bind the demon to your will. This may or may not result in the screamer eating your face off and drinking your soul like delicious tears. Feel free to eat the cookies. They're warptastic. Only take one or Slanesh will lock you in her personal dungeon to make more if you wandered into the formless wastes. Find a way out. Chaos Undivided is a bit boring. Do be careful to avoid the Furies who will gang up and kill you because they have nothing better to do. Alternatively, if you are a greater demon, demon prince, or being of equal or superior willpower, the formless wastes aren't a bad place to set up shop. Just don't stay for very long. It does tend to get boring after a little while. If you wandered into the soul forges, be prepared for remodeling. You'll soon be a demon engine fed into the soul furnaces. Your screaming, eternally tormented soul will be used as fuel, and your bodily remains will likely become a new demon. If you wandered into the fortress of corn, beat the living shit out of something before it beats the shit out of you. The fortress arenas accept all visitors as fighters unless they have visited more than 16 times, at which point they are considered a resident, or their name is on the black slate. Those who survive 84 rounds in the arena will be made into a blood litter. If you are a resident you will be given a choice of arena to enter from the 64 circles. Visitors arenas are randomly chosen. Please visit the Sanctum of Kadinga for further information. There will be signed skull pikes directing you to the office. And no they do not clean the blood off the floor. If your name is on the black slate, entry to the arena may be made by appointment only. You are on the slate because you have either seriously depleted Korn's forces last time you came, you cheated while in the arena, or both. The color of your name will indicate your status. Purple is for cheaters. Red is for victors. You may make an appointment to redeem yourself in Korn's eyes or to challenge the Endless Carnage record. The current record for Endless Carnage is held by one Doom Guy at 9847 rounds. In second place is Scarbrand at 485 rounds. And in last place is Abaddon at 6 rounds. To make an appointment please enter the Sanctum of Kadinga. State your name. Present your weapon of choice. You will be restricted to 5 weapons at maximum. At least one must be melee only. And no weapons with a maximum range higher than 15 imp corpses will be accepted. Measurement guide provided at office. 
and your arena of choice. Appointments must be made at least 8 minutes in advance in order to give time for your opponents to revive or wake as well as for the blood servants to collect any skulls still on the ground. Then enter the brass armory to select your weapons and proceed to the elevator to the arenas. Do be careful not to wander into the juggernaut pens. They are clearly marked by skulls. They will gore you until you're a stain on the floor. If you do escape, the bloodletters will stab you for entering the juggernaut pens without permission. Juggernaut rodeos are only on Sundays between the hours of 8 o candle and 6 o candle. Bring your own gear. If you died fighting in Korn's name and were carried off by a smoking hot demonic viking chick in red armor, congratulations. You may have entered Chaos Valhalla. If you wandered into the palace of Slanesh. Fap or Schlick depending what parts you have. You might become a demonette if Slanish is feeling whimsical. You might instead end up as is her new sex toy for fetish is best not described. If you wandered into the Garden of Nurgle you will become a Plagubera. Regardless if you do anything or not. Unless you're a Mary Sue. If you manage to impress Nurgle by lasting a while you might end up as a Herald instead. If you are about to succumb to Super Ebola in the Garden of Nurgle proceed to pop pimples blackheads on your face and post it on YouTube. Who knows you may actually gain grandfather's favor. This is a last resort though and you will still end up a Plagabara. Alternatively. You may be eaten by one of the garden's denizens or the garden itself before you succumb to its many plagues. You may still become a plague of beer after they shit you out. Though, if you wandered into the maze of Tsinch, you're screwed. Do know this is because of the maze's purely magical nature. It is very likely you will either have your mind broken and be forced to wander the maze for all eternity, have your immortal soul absorbed by the maze. Or wander into one of the mazes continually spawning spires where you will be trapped for all eternity. Just as planned. If you're ox out or call the Drago, troll away. If you're not a skink or call the Drago, meet up with ox call called Drago and Lemon Russ, get hammered. It is safe to drink despite the aura of menace. And troll together. If you find none of these gentlemen, start screaming that none of this is real and that gods are fake. When a short plump bald man appears next to you proceed to troll away if you pop up next to the eternal mansion of Malor, talk nicely to the closest guardian of contradictions to let you in you will successfully enter while suffering in the barbed forests of doubt trying to escape the great oval of unbelief being numb to spawn paradoxes in the nest of ironies and running between the moving towers while ticks try to hunt you down. Such is the way of a god that makes rolling a 7 with a d6 possible. If you are a son of malice, steal stuff screaming how you will kill them all alternatively you may try to catch demons and proceed to use them to battle other demons like Grimduck Pokemon. If you're a null, how the fuck did you manage that oh well. You're pretty much invincible. Have fun, troll away. Keep in mind that anything you touch or even approach depending on your power, will likely dissolve into nothing. This includes things you stand on, like floors, bridges and stairs. This may even include air. So while sickers and even regular humans can get away by believing there is air around and warp being twisted by their will to manifest that belief, you are stuck with what you brought with you from the real space. Yes, those pieces of toast are actually following you back to your warp hut. No. You are not high on warp dust. Feel free to eat them. They taste like the cookies. For the more technically inclined, find and join the dark mechanicum as a heretic. It might take a century or several. Eventually the amount of menial labor will allow you access to the good shit that those luddites working for the corp god hoard for themselves. You won't care about the screams of your victims because you'll have implants to tune it out. You might have to modify or dispose of your flesh heap of a body but hey. You are a cyborg now. You can build yourself an awesome all new one. With booze and hookers. Just remember to choose or create tech surfs that are smart and loyal enough to not screw it up. After a millennium of mad science and some luck. One day you could end up on par with a naturist score ear and sucker punch primarchs like he can.